So what comes to viewership? Rather than focusing on viewer numbers in the viewership matter, the main idea is to focus on why people watch esports. For the why question, a motivation scale for sports consumption, from now on referred to as MSSC, was used in studying the consumer behavior in different sports fields. The same scale has been used for identifying motives for esports consumption. In, art, in an article by Hamari and Stjoblum in 2016, they used the MSSC to study the motives on why people watch esports. In the study, the MSSC scale was slightly modified and consisted of 10 constructs. These constructs were vicarious achievement, aesthetics, drama, escapism, acquisition of knowledge, skills of the players and athletes, social interaction, phys physical attractiveness, novelty, and enjoyment of aggression. We will look esports viewership from the point of view of the just described MSSC. Vicarious achievement means empathizing and co-living with people and characters coming from achievements of teams and players. You can feel like you belong in a community and are one with the teams and players, like being the sixth player of our five-man roster as a, as a fan. Since the platforms used in esports are interactive, the spectators can get a deeper connection with the players as they can directly interact with the player. In esports tournaments, this is not possible in the, in the same way as they are in personal streams, which some of the professional players also may host from time to time. I also believe that professional and ex-professional players may have a stronger feeling of this vicarious achievement, as they may have experienced the feelings and emotions of the players themselves. Aesthetics do not seem to be one of the reasons esports is being watched. Um, this may be because the game in question might be too complex and requires a lot of concentration to be followed effectively. Spectators thus cannot focus on the aesthetics while a lot is going on uh, in the game. However, in most cases, people who watch esports um, are the people who play the game themselves. It is presumed that they understand the fundamentals of the game. So people usually do not watch all esports games, but tend to focus on the game they play. It is hard to believe that the game they play would be too complex for them to understand. From watching perspective, games in the esports field are indeed hard to follow without any understanding of the game. However, arguably, there are spectacular performances in esports games and relate somewhat to drama, which can mean comebacks, pentakills, and so on but it might not be the main reason why spectators tune in. There is another point of view to this. People who play themselves and watch the esports games are no longer paying attention to the aesthetics. Esports players know the game and have seen the game so many times they do not necessarily pay attention to the graphics or beauty of the performance, but rather want to copy and perform themselves. It could mean that the acquisition of knowledge for esports enthusiasts is more important than aesthetics. According to the referred study, drama doesn't significantly, uh, significantly associate with spectator frequency. Drama is a part of esports, but do not dictate their viewing habits. Dramatic events happen rarely and are indeed part of every esports game, but it is not the reason people tune in to watch. Esports. Escapism is the same in esports context as in any other. It relates to escaping from day-to-day -day routines. This can relate to both to playing and spectating esports. The whole motivation of escapism is less dependent on the actual outcome of the game, and it is similar in terms of providing a means to escape as other forms of media and traditional sports. It is hard to measure if it is stronger in esports than in traditional media or sports, and I feel like it's even a bit unnecessary. I feel that people find different ways to escape daily routines and settle with the ones best suited for them. Playing esports needs concentration and skill in an interactive environment, so overall experience of escapism can be very strong.
Acquisition of knowledge was positively and significantly affecting esports consumption. As most esports spectators are gamers themselves, there is much to learn in real time from the professionals. The professionals are not hiding their skills in a tournament where they need to perform at their best and are thus at least partially used by esports players to develop their own gameplay. There seem to be only small and statistically insignificant correlation between players' skill level and watching frequency. This would mean that people are not interested in the player's skill level, but perhaps some other aspect. From my own experience, I feel like more people tune in for the more highly skilled players. It doesn't necessarily mean that it affects watching habits. People who tune in for the big events might have watched some esports even if the big event had not taken place. Non-esports enthusiasts tend rarely watch big esports events as it is not relevant to them and they might not understand the game. Social interaction did not seem to have any impact on watching frequency either. Many streaming services have tools for social interaction, such as chat. The chat is used by some people, but people would still tune in to watch the games even without the chat. Um, This article supported this hypothesis. People come to watch the game, not the chat, even though it is fun to speculate certain situations. Moreover, at least the chat in Twitch does not add any extra value, and it is usually used to spam emotes and copy-paste memes. This is what I would have said before. However, I cannot help but feeling that the Twitch chat brings a sense of belonging to some be- to some people, and it is a social channel to express yourself, even if it is in the form of spamming emotes. It is safe to say that it is hard to have a constructive discussion in a chat that has thousands of people. Physical attractiveness relates to traditional sports, even though in the past few years we have seen esports players become more fit and to be more in shape. This may be because esports teams want their players to be healthy for various reasons and probably have hired a personal trainer for the team and perhaps a nutritionist. Withstanding stressful situations in long games require good physical condition. Also, the ability to focus on the game is important, and good physical and mental balance may help to keep focused. The esports spectators still come mainly for the game and not for the shape of the athletes. Esports is a fairly novel phenomenon still in the minds of many people. Esports enthusiasts are interested in it as well as those who want to know more about it. As was discussed from the industry perspective, there are constantly new teams and players entering the competitive scene, along with the rising new talent. Scene is constantly evolving, meaning that esports feels fresh and in a way sustains the novelty feeling as there are continuously new things happening. Enjoyment of aggression seemed to be positively and significantly affecting esports consumption. Even though the players themselves may rarely behave aggressively, the games that are played usually relate to violence in some way. Sometimes when watching live streams, you can see the professional players getting frustrated and behaving aggressively. Sometimes the enjoyment of aggression may stem from the rivalries that exist between esports teams and players. 